I think in an older generation, it's more the debilitating factor is the shame. Do you know what I mean? That if it's not cared for, if it's not done, to not be as mobile. I think the pressure on younger people, if you look now on social media, to correct themselves, to be perfect. So the first time you see something on your leg and you go, what's that, you know what I mean? I'm less than perfect. We're all less than perfect. Be it on the outside or the inside. If it's an issue with you, find out. I don't think there's any part of us that needs to be hidden away, emotionally or physically. I don't think he felt lonely. If he felt isolated, he probably isolated himself a little bit. I just think there was a sense of pride that came with not wanting to be seen in a vulnerable position. It didn't bother us. He'd been this amazing guy, he'd looked out for us all our lives, do you know what I mean? He'd been a constant source of inspiration, and I don't think any parent wants to be seen in that position. Although he would, he would almost joke that um, it was the closest he'd got to fall playing 20 years with my mum, creaming his legs. He saw this as, I'm not indestructible. Not because he was stubborn. It was one more thing he didn't need. And again, to, to, to go and get it seen to, I think there was an element of, this is one things, you just get on with it. And you don't just get on with it. The sooner you talk to someone, the sooner you learn about exercises, about squeezing, about, you know, support stockings, all these things. I do the same now. I'm in denial and I wake up and it's there as a thing and I'm, I turned up today and I was embarrassed to show my legs off. I thought it was all up for it to promote. And there's me, you know, sort of mouthing up about how, telling my dad what to do. I look at my legs and go, who could love that? Or them. He was active, he didn't do specific exercises which I wish we'd known more about in terms of his circulation, in terms of his legs. But he was, when he could be, you know, always up and about. But again, it's like learning that thing of exercises you could be doing, should be doing. You've got to be really careful not to preach, and I've said to friends about this, is that in isolation, we'll cook the healthiest things from the children when you're on your own you tend to make do, because you don't make an effort when you're cooking for yourself. If you've got ulcers, if you've got this, if, if, if you've removed yourself socially from people, there's nobody there to either impress with healthy eating or to G you want to eat healthy. And not all people are wired to eat healthily. Everything is linked to... If you're solitary, you know, if you're on your own, a lot of... That'll be Spielberg. <laughs> Tell him I'm busy. <laughs> we know eating better, eating healthier, is a common sense thing to do across the board health-wise. Not just for your legs, with everything. But there is a point where you can reach where you don't feel like you matter that much, so you don't make the effort for yourself that you would make for other people. So it's so much easier said than done. I will not sit here and say to someone, eat better. I can encourage you, I can ask you to, but if it's not on your list of things to do on that particular day, what I would say is, of everything we've discussed, between exercise, between stretching, if you feel overloaded by that, do one. Then you'll find a way that one might encourage you to the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Introduce it at your own pace. And don't let shame of, 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 of what's a natural occurrence in your body put you off. Curvy got was fun, you know, amazing. It's there, it's out there. That's the saddest thing, is when you let an ailment, or what you perceive as an ailment, remove you, from the cur that's available, it's one. Because it will convince you that nobody wants to look at legs like that, nobody wants to do this, nobody wants to see. Maintain your social links, speak to your GP, 
If you're concerned, don't leave it to a point where it's debilitating. Because then you really are shut off. It's phenomenal the lack of shock horror that you realise. But also things like that, they'll fester in two places, in your leg and in your mind. And one of them you can definitely stop just by communicating. And then you can learn how to care for it. And then you can learn about exercises. Then you can learn about diet. You can learn about these things. And you can, you can do something about it. You're not going to be chased out of town with pitchforks. Just learn to share. And I think from a very stoic sort of generation, mental health with physical health. It's about communication, and you're not the only one. I've learnt little things. I'm taking baby steps. I have circle tree issues, you know. I have to stop certain habits. I have to get back into better habits, and under lockdown, it's been a difficult thing because it's been quite a... But it's been a time to let go of some common sense because everyone's felt fed up. So I can either leave my legs as they are now or go and see my GP, continue with the exercises that I was advised. I've got to be aware of it and what I can't do and what I've learnt from my dad is don't choose somewhere in the room to look at because you don't want to look at your legs because you don't want to acknowledge what's going on. That's my thing. And I think if I want to be around, for as long as I deserve to be around. I think it's that, it's like, it's no good me sitting there and telling you what you need to learn from my dad's example, I need to learn from my dad's example. It's not the end of the world, but it's just the start of a different regime. And a different regime means a better quality of life. <laughs>